Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of Role Model Makers Experts Cafe. I'm your host, Dr. L. the Parent Whisperer, and today with me, I have an amazing lady that I have seen in our community before, uh, and I've asked her to be here to share with you a little bit more about what she does. Uh, I think you're going to find it interesting and important. I would like to introduce you guys uh, to Ms. Cara Terrell. Did I say that correctly, Cara? You got it. Awesome. Uh, now, uh, Cara, can you tell our audience members a little bit more about what you do and uh, why you do what you do, and then we can go from there. And thank you guys for tuning in, and I really appreciate you, Cara, for taking time to be here because I know you're super busy. So uh, oh. please tell us a little bit more about yourself. I'm so happy to be here. I love talking about all things parenting and raising small human beings. I'm Cara Terrell. I am the founder of Core 4 Parenting and the creator of the Collaborative Parenting Methodology that supports birth to five development um, and school readiness. That's a really big, important thing for me. I am the mom of girls. They are grown and flown. So I'm on the other side of that. And I am a former preschool teacher. So I take this early childhood education space that I lived in for so long and my conscious parenting coaching, and I blend them together so that we raise really great human beings who are going to change the world in a positive way. I, I love it. Uh, Cara, when I was in private practice, that was my favorite, basically. Zero to six was the age group that I really focused on because the, the the things that happened during those years really impact the rest of that person's life and not to mention humanity's future and potential. So uh, I really find it foundational and uh, fundamental to address this. Uh, so Cara, uh, tell us a little bit more about why this is, because we're talking about little people, but at the same time, these are little people with big brains and big hearts, whether you realize it or not. They're very capable and they're oftentimes uh, under what do you call that? They, they're. I call this, oftentimes, the most important developmental and cognitive building moments of their life between birth and five is the most overlooked. Right. Yes. Yeah, so and right. it's just because of the way that they're expressing themselves in the world. Right. As adults, we come from a different space. Um, so yeah, with eighty-five percent of their foundational brain growth, the literal size of their brain right. done by five years old this is the time that we need to be just feeding them with all the goodness. I call them the core four connectors and the core four learning areas for success in school. Right. Yeah. I'm all for, you know, a proper expression and training and even therapies. Uh, but the problem is that when you have a, a structure, a physical structure that is not shaped properly, it's an uphill batter for battle for the rest of their lives. So that's like you said, 85% of that development of that physical structure is happening. And you need to have the highway before you can put cars on it. So that's and that's you know, you're exactly right. That's one of the reasons, it's the primary reason I left the classroom. As I said, you know, and I was also in kindergarten classrooms and people would say, oh, I'm so glad you're their first teacher. And I'm like, but I'm not. And I wasn't. <laughs> you are. And so year after year, seeing kids less and less ready to tackle every area of learning the, in the classroom, I said, we can't dig ourselves out of this hole. There needs to be some type of positive solution that parents can just build into what they're already doing every single day with their kids birth to five. Right. And, and we, I think I hear this from college professors, from parents of teens, that uh, there is so much more expectation, so many more things that kids need to get involved these days. But with that pressure, kids need to be more resilient. However, what we're finding out is just the opposite, that the fragility uh, for them to be able to withstand stress and all the different stressors that exist out there is is just kind of working in reverse so again this topic is really really important thank you for what you do uh tell us a little bit more about uh this group how do you find people that actually find their way to you what are their typical challenges that they come to you with well right now um, we're in the middle of a world shift if you will. And so primarily I have parents that are seeking me out because they're pandemic moms and they had kids during this challenging time. And now they have toddlers and preschoolers and even kindergartners, right? Kids who were toddlers when the world hit pause. 
And we're seeing what you just described, except on a level no one's ever experienced before, right. that their emotional regulation abilities are, comp they're just, they're not there. Their ability to move into a social setting and not feel that high level of social anxiety or stranger danger. You know, these things are, are big problems. Kids are being, they're late to talk, they're late to walk. And so their emotional regulation, their frustration and their communication abilities are delayed. So parents are seeking me out because they're looking for solutions to regain those milestones mm. and then empower their children to be able to do these independent steps like go to a preschool for six hours in a day and be able to separate and involve themselves in a really healthy, positive learning way. Right. Really amazing. Uh, and yes, uh, what you just described as far as the post-COVID, post-pandemic era, uh, you know, we had certain issues, especially when it came to socialization or academic performance, uh, especially with children with special needs, neurodiverse kids, uh, screen times and how it's affecting lifestyle before the pandemic, but the pandemic really brought it to a new level as far as, you know, these delays have now gotten a lot bigger, um, a lot more prevalent. Uh, and and there is a window that that brain is still active and can conform and adjust. And then after, like you said, you get to your sixth and seventh year old. Now you go from addressing and fixing the issue to compensating for the issue. Now that you know that this is going to be a weakness that you have and learning ways to cope with the concern uh, as opposed to actually address it. So again, important. Um, all right. And then a lot of this stuff is also lifestyle related, right? So there are some challenges that uh, our families need to overcome, meaning that they need to do things differently than the way they have been used to. Uh, so what are some of the challenges that you see there that they really, like when you tell them, I'm, there's like, I can't do that. Or how, how do I go about and stop doing what I'm doing? <laughs> or those kind of things. What are some of those challenges that you hear? Well, one of the challenges you just hit on the head is that during a stressful, chaotic, period, elongated period of living through COVID, kids created dependencies on technology and actually associate technology as a soothing strategy, because very often that's what was put in front of them during those moments. Um, and so something that a lot of people say to me is, how do I break that relationship and then reintroduce technology in a healthy way. I'm all about technology being a tool and not a toy yeah. and defining it as such. So that's one big thing. But also we know these kids are born into the digital era, right? right? They need to learn how to be healthy digital citizens. And yeah. so it's one thing that we are absolutely working on. And then another real big struggle for parents is like all the information gets thrown at them. If they Google one thing and then they've got all this other stuff I'm so overwhelmed. And so what I've done is I've said to them, okay, five things. I'm going to tell you the top five executive functioning skills that you need to be practicing with your child on a daily basis and how to weave those into conversations and create opportunities for them to practice them. Just five, keep it small, keep it manageable because those are the, and then we'll grow as, as we can, but overwhelm does not solve what we're dealing with here. We need to keep it clear, calm, and, and focused and consistent. Well, Cara, actually what you just said is really important. Like when I was in private practice, patients were coming in and they had digestive issues and they were like clumsy and running into things and there was behavioral issues. And then there were so many different things, respiratory, immune system, and the list goes on. And they were going from therapist and expert and they were really overwhelmed like you described. However, the beauty of what you're doing is working from top down because you know that when you work with the brain and reprogram the brain and make it work, then everything else that it controls its function of also ends up working properly. So, uh, so just those few things goes a long way in addressing all kinds of things from personality to performance, basically. So, so really cool that you actually have that information. Uh, and you said five. So do you mind sharing a little bit about that uh, more with us? Not at all. Yeah. So um, the top five executive functioning skills that kids need to be successful as people, 
and as learners, especially in the classroom, um, are, they need to be able to delay their gratification, to wait for something. That's mm -hmm. a challenge that, okay. um, and you, you know what's funny is when I go through these with parents in my courses, they say, do you know I learned as much about myself as I did my child, right? Because this is not yeah. a child specific problem. Yeah, exactly. This is a society specific issue. Exactly. Um, they need to be able to manage time. Time management is a big one. And we manage their time for them a lot when they're little. So we need to give them opportunities to practice that as well. Flexible thinking, that not everything has the outcome that we think it's going to in our head, that mm. sometimes things happen and sometimes things don't and dealing with our emotional regulation capabilities, that's number four, yeah. when they don't go according to plan, um, and then, you know, this is a slightly different one for most people. They say, is this really a skill? Sense of self. I'm a huge believer that as parents, our job is to mirror for our kids what we see that they are innately capable of, what they're really good at, what they struggle with, what emotions they tend to turn to. And the more we develop that and grow that identity, that sense of self from the inside out, the more that our children are going to have the ability to advocate for themselves when they go out into the world and all the other selves, the self-confidence, the self-awareness, the self they all just fall into place. Right. I love it. I love it. Yes. And uh, on the topic of self, uh, I think most people don't realize that your brain develops that sense of identity from inside out. It doesn't happen the other way around. Like you can take a child to soccer and then have them identify as a soccer player. And if they do, that is not an inherently owned characteristics. And a lot of the challenges in artificial intelligence is stemming from that, because how do you instill a sense of self in something that does, does didn't exist before? Uh, and very important. And again, like you said, it happens in those first five, six years of life uh, for them to develop that sense of identity, because from there, they can now have a reference point of how they relate to the world. And if they don't have that, then that reference point, just like the blue dot on the GPS map, it doesn't exist. Uh, and it's easy to lose yourself, pick the wrong job, find the wrong relationship, wrong career, so on and so forth, right? Uh, so like, that's how foundational your stuff is. I, so I'm totally amazed by the stuff that you do. Very cool. All right. So you mentioned the five things. What would be the one tip for the busy parents that if you were to do that, if they could start implementing this, they could improve family life right after this? Ooh. Oh my gosh. You're right. Is Picking so one is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one thing that you can do right now is start narrating for your child. Just start using your words to explain and reflect what their body is doing and what their words sound like. Your body's so big right now. I bet there's a feeling associated with that. Your voice is so loud right now. You really want me to hear your words. Um, and then, you know, frame them as emotions and do it for yourself too. This is one of the trickiest ones for parents because they're like, okay, I can do that. No problem. They becoming a walk, a walking narrator, right? But do it for yourself. I had such a hard day today. I was so upset. The car in front of me was going really slow. I almost got angry about it. And then I decided that I could manage without being angry. Like be what you are asking them to practice. Right. Wow. I, all right. I'm going to start doing that right now. <laughs> I feel very enthusiastic about actually going ahead and applying what you just described uh, and narrating, narrating that to my kids um, so that they can see what I experienced during my day. Um, perfect. So yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And it aligns with everything we said, because ultimately, what are you doing? You're building a healthy emotional vocabulary. You're yeah. opening up a communication airway where everyone's allowed to talk about how they feel. And that is going to support you in those difficult decisions later. Beautiful. Awesome. All right. We're done. That's, that's pretty important. 
<laughs> very cool. Uh, Kara, as we mentioned, this is a very vast topic and extremely important. Uh, you and I share the same passions, of course. Uh, so tell me this. How can people connect with you, be part of this community? Because that's the other thing. Uh, socialization doesn't happen just by you saying, go and do it. Uh, we got to role model that behavior. So how can our parents role model that behavior and connect with you, connect with your community? Thank you so much for asking. So I have, um, I have a Facebook community and people can join us there, Conscious Parenting Support for Toddler Moms. Um, but I also would love for people to grab the free gift. It is five mindful mantras for managing toddler meltdowns. And it does exactly what I just described. It gives you the back pocket language to stay calm and manage those meltdowns. And that will help with the emotional regulation right out of the gate. And of course, you can find me on all the social networks at core Four. Beautifully done. Um, Kara has included a lot more than what she just said. So I'm going to put all of the details. Uh, she's very generous, very heart-centered. Uh, make sure you check the description of this video and uh, role model that behavior as we discussed for your kids that it's okay not to have all the answers. It's okay to reach out for help and you don't have to do all the heavy lifting yourself. They're genuinely good people in this world wanting to make a difference for the better, wanting to support us. And we all need to be able to connect in that sense. Uh, Kara, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. And audience members, be sure to check and connect with Kara. And if you haven't already done so, connect with us by clicking the subscribe button so you get the notifications. And all the experts that come here share their expertise and gifts with you, such as Kara has done. Uh, and stay tuned for more amazing content that's coming your way. Uh, before we finish, Kara, any final words for our audience members? Just be good to yourself. You are living in a post-pandemic parenting phase of life that no one has ever experienced before. And so holding yourself to the same expectations and holding your kids to the same expectations that were pre-pandemic set is it might be hard to achieve. So be gentle, ask for help, and know that you are doing the best you can. And just by doing that, you're an amazing parent. Well said. Awesome. I look forward to further collaborations and seeing you guys on future episodes. Until then, cheers.